Hello, this is a uh, crest testing for a uh, JZX100 plug and play harness using ECU Master Black for his customer Ollie. So we've completely rebuilt a brand new harness for them and it is our modular design which we're going to go through in a minute. So what I'm going to do first of all is uh, just go to pictures of how it's built underneath here because obviously you can't see anything, it's all heat shrinked and environmentally sealed. So bear with me a second, we'll do that and I'll come back. Alright, so that's what it looks like underneath there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from the other side down to here and show you exactly how everything sits, where everything plugs in and how everything works. So starting from here, we've got our physical ECU. We've got our patch harness to go into the two JZX100 ECU plugs over there. We've got our auxiliary connector over here. So that's using any unused inputs and outputs of the ECU, taking it here rather than having to mess around with the wires in there. Coming along over here and at the grommets over here we've got all of the body plugs for the JZX100 over here so that's a straight plug and play into that. Coming up along the back here you're going to have your first breakout over here and that's where we're going to have our injector sub harness, our ignition sub harness and our wideband oxygen sensor sub harness. Then we're going to come along here and it's going to be a breakout over there to go to our cam sensor at the back there. And then we're going to have our ground which again is going to go over to the inlet manifold over here as per usual. Coming along here, then we've got our breakout where all the harnessing goes down through the actual intake manifold itself there. And in that little section over there, we've got our oil harness, sub harness. We've got our gearbox section harness. We've got our throttle harness. We've got our fuel pressure harness. And we've got our knock harness. So we're going to go through all of the different sections and explain how it works from there. Then the harness is going to carry on along here, over the top through the gap over there. Now this is going into a, a non-VVTI engine, so you see we've got no breakout here to go to the VVTI solenoid, so that's absolutely fine. Coming down here, we're going to go off to our crank sensor over there. Then we've got our Mac boost valve sub harness over there. And then we've got our gauge temp and our ECU temp, which will obviously go into the pipe in the front over here. Now obviously on a JZX100, the alternator harness is part of the actual chassis harness. It's not part of the engine harness, so that's why there's no alternator plug over there. Okay, so that is how the harness goes along there. Obviously I'm just showing you this now with no intake on, so you can actually see everything because it wouldn't be visible once it's all on. But what we'll do is we'll go through all the little sub harnesses for now. So starting at the back here, we've got our injector sub harness. And what we got is the injectors over there. So let me just creep around here. Okay, so in this case, the customer is going to be having the youth car style or EV614 style injector. So there we built him a harness over there. So he can just plug that in and then go from there. Obviously, the way it's designed is if he ever wanted to change injectors, he could obviously then just unplug this. Uh, we could make a new harness for the different connectors if there is different connectors. And he can just unplug this and plug the new ones in. All right. Coming over to the um, ignition sub harness over there. Now he's obviously going for the Audi coil plug. So we've got again, an ignition sub harness there that just plugs straight into there. Now we have actually included the earth for the ignition harness into the actual engine harness side. And that is because what we wanted to do was if you guys need to change spark plugs, you can actually just unplug the whole ignition harness from there, pull off all of your coils, put that to one side, change all your spark plugs, pick up the whole harness, put it back down and plug it in. So obviously the biggest killer of these particular connectors is connecting and unconnecting. They have a very limited life cycle on standard ones where these plugs have a much longer cycle time of how many times you can connect and disconnect it. So again, really nice and useful there. Coming down here, we've got our wideband oxygen sensor. So obviously the ECU master can run either LS 4.2 or 4.9. 
In this case, we are running at LSU 4.9, and so we've got a little adapter harness there. If the customer ever wanted to change over to 4.2, again, you could just call us up. We can supply a little separate sub harness for 4.2 with a lambda sensor to go in there. So again, no problems there. So again, really nice and simple. Coming to the front here, so in this particular case, the customer's got a non-VVTR 1JZ, so he doesn't have drive-by-wire, but we have allocated everything for drive-by-wire in here. It is ready to go. So if he wants to change that to say a Bosch drive-by-wire throttle body, no problem, we can make him a new sub-harness and he can fit a Bosch throttle body or whatever from there. In his particular case over here, we've got his throttle harness there, which includes a um, IAT sensor. TPS is going to go there, and then we've got the idle air control valve, which is a standard one, which obviously lives at the back of the inlet manifold there. Hence the reason why he's got such a long harness section to come from underneath there, all the way around the back, and then up to plug into the sensor over there. Okay. Coming over to oil. Now in this particular case, the customer has specified oil pressure and temperature. We've also put an oil switch because he needs it for the dash in order for that to work. So again, this is capable of having oil pressure, temperature, and just a normal oil pressure switch all connected at the same time. So you'll see if we come over here, he's got his Bosch oil pressure and temperature sensor, which connects directly into there. And then we've got the standard Toyota oil pressure switch, which goes directly into there, and that all plugs into your oil there. Okay, so if you had a particular customer that wanted to have an oil pressure, which is a three wire one, a separate Bosch oil temperature, and the switch itself, again, all capable with this section over there, and we can custom make these as long as you want. So again, don't have to buy a new harness if you want to change anything, you just add it on. This one is a fuel pressure sensor. So these customers are getting a fuel pressure sensor. We are just waiting for the lengths from um, Tom and Chris Motorsport to tell us how long these need to be. And here we have our knock sensor plug. So the reason we've got a six pin plug is we've actually wired these in the harness for Bosch wideband sensors. In this particular case, the customers are sticking with the standard knock sensor. So you can see we've got the standard Toyota knock sensor plugs on there. And again, that goes in there. So if the customer ever changed their mind, they can just literally phone us up. We can supply knock sensors, studs, nuts, and build them a new harness in order to accommodate these. But the wiring is already all built into the harness. So you don't have to add it in later, okay? Uh, this is a J600 plug-in, so we have access to things like reverse lights. And uh, that's why we have this gearbox plug over here. This one, guy is having a BMW gearbox, so we've got a reverse light switch just to plug directly in there. As you know, BMW gearboxes do not have a speed sense on the gearbox, so that's there. On the plug and play versions, we do have a gearbox section, so when we do these for, say, IS200, if you've seen in a previous video, obviously we can put the speed sensor and the reverse light all into there and do that, okay? And so that covers all of these over here. Again, nice and simple. They obviously go through the inlet manifold, come underneath there, so you don't have this big chunk of plugs on top. It's underneath, well hidden, where nobody can see it under the inlet manifold itself. And as you can imagine, most of the stuff that's in there is obviously underneath here. So you've got your knock sensors over there and over there. You've got your oil pressure over there. You've got your starter motor over there. So again, we've got a little starter plug, which goes down through there. And then you've got, um, now uh, what's this, oil, knock, knock, that, and then obviously your throttle sits over here. So this is designed to come underneath here, and then your IAT just goes along here to meet in with your intake pipe over there. Okay. So, really, really nice and simple. In this case, obviously, it's plug and play, even simpler. You just plug in all the body plugs. You go from there, you plug in your two ECU harnesses, and you go from there. Okay, so... Obviously, we wanted to show you guys where everything goes, what it looks like, explain how it all works with the intake off so you can actually see everything. So next up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be starting these up. Uh, obviously, because the ECU Master Blacks will be using the standard coils because we can't get RD coils underneath with the 2JZ GE VBTI intake over the top. Okay, So that's the nice thing about ECU Master. It can actually run these dumb coils directly without an igniter. So it's a really nice, simple thing. And all these modular harnesses, what we have done because of the popularity of that, uh, we have actually wired these ignition harnesses to accept these dumb coils. We can build your harness for that, provided you use an ECU Master Black. If you're using Link or Haltech or anything like that, you'll have to change the coilover plug in order for our modular harness to work. But again, most of you guys do anyway, so it's not a major issue from there. Okay, so let me go back. We're gonna put this all back together so we can actually start it up. Um, we do have a full ECU master series about how to set up the ECU, how to set up your inputs and outputs, how to test everything. So I'm not going to repeat myself and go through all of that. So if you do want to watch that, just go through. We do have a playlist called ECU Master, which will go through all of that information for you. But yeah, so what we'll do is we'll cut now. We'll come back. It'll all be back together. And obviously, we'll fire these up to make sure that they all work and everything is great. 
All right, but thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in a second. Okay, bye. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we've plugged all the ECU in. We've got our map sensor connected to the intake manifold. We've got our intake manifold in here. We've got our idle air control valve so we can show that that's working. We've got a TPS plugged in there from our throttle plug. We've got our Mac plugged in that we've already tested and we know that that works. We're obviously using the dumb coils, um, standard 2J, JZ coils for that one for this little test and we're using the standard 2JZ injectors off of our own testing harness on there. Coming underneath here, we've got our knock harness over there, we've got our oil harness over there, so we've obviously got our oil temp and pressure sensor, we've got our fuel pressure sensor over there, and we've got our oil switch over there. Starter plugged in, power for the starter motor over to there. So she's gonna be ready to start. We've obviously got our little adapter harness from our two days of GE VVTI coolant temp sensor over to the other side here. And there you go. So it's a little temporary one just so we can test everything is working. So the system is now on. And obviously if we come, well, if we come over to the PC, you'll see we've got IAT reading of 23, coolant temp of 50, I've already started the engine up. We've got oil temp of 19 and coolant temp of 50 degrees over there. And uh, let me just check and look, look. I'll just change that to fuel pressure. All right, okay. So we've got fuel pressure there, oil pressure there, and we're absolutely fine. Right, okay, so we're happy that we're getting all the signals through from there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start it up. And the reason I'm gonna start it up is so we can actually see the idle control valve moving. So as I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna hold the camera over the idle control valve. The actual idle is a little bit higher than what that is. So you'll see that physically close down to demonstrate that that's actually working. Okay, so let me do fuel pump. Right, so if we watch that, I don't know where's gonna be the best angle for that. If I hold that over there. See that close down now over there. Okay, so that's idle control valve opening again um, as the car shuts down. And obviously you can see it, oh, it closed there. In this particular case, it closed there. So that's absolutely fine. So we know the idle control valve is working. We know that's working. We know the engine is running and happy to run. We've tested all the individual sensors, things like Mac injectors and coils and so on with his original harnesses over there. Uh, okay, so that's about it, guys. And thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to fire us a message below or find us at Phoenix Engine Management on Facebook. But yeah, we'll see you again soon. And to follow is just the pictures of what it looks like when it's all complete. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.